Notice that God did not send Jesus into the world to put condemnation onto the world. God sent Jesus into the world so that the world through Jesus might be saved. There's so much less of us in this verse. I think that's why this one isn't as popular as the previous one. Even though in my opinion, this, has, this one packs the punch. In fact, I think your entire theology of understanding God and His intention in Christ is summed up in John 3.17. God did not send Jesus onto planet earth to condemn planet earth. He sent Jesus onto planet earth so that the planet and everyone living on it would be saved through Jesus, not through themselves. Because up until Him, their only answer was themselves. And the next best thing was Judaism. A system by which if you do the good, you get the good. And if you do bad, you get the bad. So God didn't send Jesus into the earth to condemn the earth, but that the world through Jesus might be saved. This is why Irma and Harvey and Jose are not being sent by your father to teach Americans a lesson. Your father doesn't need to kill an innocent four-year-old in his bed by drowning him and hitting him with 185 mile an hour winds to teach homosexuals a lesson. And as long as we have this foolish idea that our father will bypass the finished work of the cross, ignore that Jesus came into the world so that the world might be saved, and then drag America back under the old covenant so he can judiciously lay a hurricane on people and rob their lives from them is insanity. And it's also interesting that God doesn't know how to do that in March. He only knows how to do it in September. What you're seeing is the phenomenon of the planet Earth shifting warm water from the middle of the planet to the northern part of the planet because the planet knows how to balance itself out. But unfortunately, man lives on a planet that doesn't realize man's in the way. And oftentimes we get hurt, but our Father is not... Listen, folks, I, don't know why I'm, I know why I'm on this because this is a big thing on the news right now and it's all over everyone's mind. Jesus doesn't get in a boat and curse the storm and tell it to stop if storms come from God to teach us lessons. Because that would be Jesus rebuking His own Father. They're natural phenomenons that sometimes scare us half to death. So Jesus, in the midst of a boat full of scared fishermen who ought to be experienced enough to handle a storm, wake up the carpenter so the carpenter can do something about it. Jesus just says, peace be still. Fellas, you should have been sleeping next to me. So instead of us, us shooting ourselves in the theological foot by cutting ourselves off from everybody that doesn't agree with us theologically over the next few days, how about we lift people up? How about we start speaking to storms instead of speaking to what we perceive to be people's error and people's sin? How about we start taking the stand that the kingdom of God can take and then when there's failure and there's, and there's death and there's mayhem let's not add to it by heaping on a condemnation that doesn't belong instead let us open up our hearts of compassion and love and help those who are absolutely incapable of helping themselves and we may win someone through the love of the father by showing them that god loves people even in spite of all of their unlovableness and we don't make them qualify for our aid or our help but we understand that the father is in love with man there, I needed to get that off my chest. Pray. Seek God. Let's speak to this issue instead of speaking about why we think God sent it. Don't give God a black eye in the midst of dark times. Amen. Our Father doesn't deserve that. He came as, as a man and died at Calvary so that the world through Him might be saved. And all we've done is throw wickedness towards who He is.